In this video, I'm going to tell you three mistakes that are commonly made by novice falconers before they even get a bird. Okay, I don't know if there are any in order. Yeah, I'm going to leave what I think is the craziest one to be number one on the list. So we'll start with number three. The number three mistake that novice falconers make before they get a bird, believe it or not, is thinking they've got more than enough land, enough permission to hunt their bird on when they get it. Um, and usually they're woefully inadequate. Now you can have a small patch of land that is a gold mine for game. But you need lots of those small patches of land. Your tiny patch of land that's, that's like water shipped down for rabbits, it doesn't matter how many's there, you're gonna spook those rabbits. You can't go back there three, two, three, four, five times a week. You certainly can't go there once a week, week in, week out. You're just gonna spook the game. It doesn't matter how much is there. So small patches of land can really be productive, but you need lots of them. In fact, you need far more hunting land than you could ever imagine to get you through five or six months of the hunting season with your bird of prey. Way more. But no patch of land is too small. Even if you get offered just a tiny field and it hasn't got any game on it, but a farmer or a landowner kindly gives you permission, take it. Show a bit of willing anyway, because who knows who owns all the bordering land to that tiny patch. And it's much easier to get land if you know John and Frida, who own this bit of land, the neighbors are much more likely to let you on their land if John and Frida put in a good word for you. So every bit of land is worth taking, show willing, tell them, you know, tell the landowner, you know, you will do pest control if they have a problem with other pests or rabbits even if you can't do it with your birds because it's not suitable land for hunting a hawk, it might be that you can help clear their land of rabbits for them with nets and ferrets anyway. Always show willing and be helpful. For sure, most novices have no concept of just how much hunting land is required to make a successful hawk. Now on that note, the second mistake novices make before they get a hawk is believing they have enough game to hunt. It's not quite the same as number three. Number two, not having enough game. So you can have a small patch of land and it'd be brimming with game. As we've already mentioned, it doesn't work in a small area because you'll spook the game. It just isn't huntable to keep returning to the same tiny patch uh, on a really regular basis, even if it seems to hold a lot of game. Most novices actually say to me, Oh yeah, I've got a few fields near where I live. And in the summer's evening, I see a few rabbits. There's loads of rabbits. I see some out. Or, yeah, there's lots of hares there when they've actually seen one hare every time they've walked their dog there. But they haven't seen lots of hares there at any one time, for instance. If you haven't got lots of game, you can't make a good falconry bird. It doesn't matter what kind of bird it is. If you have loads of land with loads of game, your young hawk has an opportunity to practice catching game because providing slips or chases isn't the issue. You've got enough game and field craft to do that. All the issue is, is allowing your bird to gain confidence to actually catch something. And once it's caught game, you're on the flyer, as long as the game is there to catch. But if it's really hard and you're ferreting all day to bolt the odd rabbit, it's most likely gonna be in a really poor setup for the hawk to have much chance anyway and the bird's just going to get frustrated being carried around seeing the occasional thing to chase that it can't, has no hope of catching anyway to make a good hawk you have to have an excess of game an excess of quarry that way that young hawk has plenty of opportunity to hone its skill massively undervalued is the amount of game you will need to make a successful hawk and even be a successful falconer. Get permission 
under your belt long before you get a hook as much as you can and scout it out find where not only is there plenty of stuff to go at but find where you can have easy setups for that young hawk you're not sporting at the beginning of your hawk's career you just need it to be able to understand and work out actually how to catch stuff so how do i know that novices make these mistakes well i will say that to be quite honest no one wants to pay for knowledge anymore that's why there's a proliferation of um, full, uh, facebook groups to do with falkery that's why there's a proliferation of youtube channels to do with falkery and that's why I set this channel up to give the birds and hopefully some well-meaning people the opportunity to learn as much as they can before they start up with full career. Despite that, I do on occasion get people contact me that want to do it the right way. They actually want to pay for some knowledge and they want to come on a full career course. How few is that? I've took full career courses off of our Icarus full career website. It's not worth having them on there. What I charge per day isn't actually, from a business point of view, worth doing. Um, it used to be run that there'd be three people on a course. Cool. The chances of three people wanting to get on a course at the same time is nil nowadays. So if people ask, I'll do a bespoke course. Even one day sometimes gives people a massive help to do stuff practically. But we run, as, it's bespoke, as many days as you want. But because I do still get people come here, there's a theme. So the theme is thinking there's enough land and enough game. But this is what I find the crazy one. And the people, you know who you are, Lindsay, Jack, <laughs> and every single person, every person that comes on a full curry course, doing it correctly, they're learning, getting all their kit, getting the housing built before they get a bird. Every single one of them discusses with me the second bird they're going to get. As in, they're going to go for two birds pretty much straight off the bat. Bird in a hand is worth two in the bush. <laughs> it really is. Two poorly trained birds are no good for nothing. One bird for proper falconry will take up every single bit of spare time you have if you're talking broad wings and short wings for sure. For sure. That will take up so much of your time. And you have so little knowledge, even when you think you've got a bit of knowledge. Put all your time into your first bird. Keep that bird. And at the end of the day, if you've got time to fly another bird, that's more time you could be out flying your actual original bird. A lady came on a course a few years ago and she got an owl before she'd even brought the red tailed hawk that she was getting, hence the courses. <laughs> you know who you are. Honestly, don't become an animal collector just yet. Just focus on everything you can do with that bird. That first bird, maybe hopefully the only bird. It's all absorbing. Just like most good things in life, the more you put in, the more you will get out. Falconry is incredibly hard. And it's incredibly easy to do it very badly, very boringly, and you won't last long. Short video. Hope you enjoyed it. For goodness sakes, think about those things. They're really important. See you in the next one.